Hello everybody and welcome to Melchester Model Railway and this shortish video on a couple of new buildings that I've picked up in the Model Centre Boxing Day sale this year. And the first is this lineside brick substation which they were selling for around £28 in their sale reduced from £37.99 and as I'm running a southern railway with lots of third rail electric trains and multiple units I thought it would be a nice addition to the layout um, especially as this is in a sort of um, 1930s style so quite appropriate for the period that I'm running and it comes in two colours, one, one black and one green. I've gone for the green version, which is more appropriate for the Southern Railway. So let's just take a little look at this. Uh, these are part of the resin buildings that Backman and Hornby make, which are already complete. You don't really need to add anything. Just find a spot on your layout and plonk them in, which is what I intend to do with this. And quite a nice looking model there, very utilitarian with its flat roof um, and this would contain electrical transformers and that sort of thing for powering the third rail network. Here are some photographs of real line side substations. As you can see these brick built buildings resemble the Backman model very closely. Even larger brick-built substations were built, and they were generally known as in the cathedral style, probably because of their large arched windows. They can still be seen on the network today, but like this one, in a rather dilapidated state. This little area of wasteland I have on my layout, just next to Melchester East signal box, it's just the right spot for this substation and should fit quite nicely. It's just a question really of finding the best positioning. I noticed from the photograph of the real thing that the side of the building that has the large doors which were presumably to enable the moving in and out of the large equipment, was facing the line side. So this was the way I decided to position the model on the layout. Next, I'm drawing round the building to create the footprint on the baseboard so that I can remove the textured surface. It would be tempting to just glue the model immediately to this, but that would mean there would be a slight gap in places and wouldn't look as realistic. It's just then a question of using my pneumatic file to remove the textured surface and get back to the baseboard level. So the building fits quite cleanly against the surface of the baseboard now. It's just a question of gluing the model in place now and I'm using this rocket card glue which does a really good job of this sort of thing. And then once that's in position adding some uh, ballast and some other scatter material around the base of the building. I'm then adding a little bit of uh, Woodland Scenics buff coloured ballast and some Woodland Scenics fine turf to help this blend in a little bit better and to make sure that there's no gap around the base of the building. And then because a flat roof such as this wouldn't have a brilliant water runoff 
um, capability. I'm just using my finger to apply a very thin smear of glue so that I can then sprinkle on some of the fine turf to create a slight moss effect. It's just a question then of leaving all that to dry. And here then is the finished article, firmly in position. I think you know something looks right on your model railway if it looks as if it's always been there. And I think this substation in this particular spot looks just, just about right. Ideal for powering some of the third rail electrics that I like to run, like this two bill just coming into view about now. All I now need is a third rail. But whether I'll do that or not, I don't really know. But it's nice to run these electrics. The next item that I purchased in the TMC Boxing Day sale was this Backman diesel fueling point. This was reduced from £25.95 to just £18. So I've often considered getting one of these in the past but never got round to it. Once again, this no frills model is of a resin construction and consists of a platform with a diesel fuel pump and a canopy. The reason that I need a diesel refueling point somewhere on the layout is so that I've got somewhere for the bullied prototype diesel locomotive to refuel. Until more permanent facilities for refuelling had been established, these locomotives, when introduced in the early 1950s, had for a long time to make do with rather rudimentary and temporary facilities, which were made for refuelling and topping up lubricating oil in the north sidings at Waterloo, where a 4,000 gallon oil tank wagon and small electric pump and filter were sited. I'm going to be sighting my refuelling point in the north siding at Melchester Yard. This is just a very short little siding which ends early because of the beam that you can see in the way. So this is an ideal spot for refuelling diesel locomotives. I may even add a fuel storage tank as well. Once I'm happy with the positioning, it's just a question of drawing round it again and then getting the trusty pneumatic file out again so that I can scrape through the ballasted surface. That seems to fit OK, so once again it's just a question of gluing into position. This time I'm adding a black ballast to give the impression of oil coated ballast that's got very dirty and grimy and oily over the years. Finally, I'm just going to drop this fuel storage tank into position. This is an item that I salvaged from my very first model railway. Check out my video entitled My 80s Lima Layout. It's nice to have something that's come from that layout still in use on this layout, although I'll probably add a bit more detailing, etc., and give it a bit of a revamp. But for now, it can sit there. And here's the diesel fueling point in its final location, in the north siding at Melchester Yard. And here comes the bullied prototype diesel electric locomotive 10201 to try it out for size.
And finally, one small item that I picked up in the sale were these Pico Coleman and Scales, which I want to position over in the goods yard. It consists of these two figures and this set of scales used for weighing out sacks of coal. These scales are going to sit very nicely over by my coal staiths in the goods yard. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing these new additions to my layout. And until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.